Hey, Thinkward. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're you're on Philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. How's it going, man? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Huh. Let me, uh, I, I'm realizing, so I'm still in Grand Theft Auto, so I'm going to switch over to actual Flight Simulator um, momentarily. But okay. hold on, let, let me do my, let me do my, my opener. Um, all right, sweet. No, we got you on. Good to have you. Um, think where my plan was to, as soon as you showed up, was to blitz you with 10 questions that okay. I have not prepared in advance, and I was okay. just going to think of them. All right. Just to get the ball rolling. Um, all right, here we go. Think work. What is your favorite color? Uh, I would say a dark blue. Dark blue. What is a place in the world that you want to visit? Florence. Oh, Florence. Were you a, what, what's like a toy you used growing up? Like, uh, for me, I'm thinking of like, I feel like there were truck kids and dinosaur kids, but I don't know if it, that was different in, in your day. So what's something... What type of kid uh, were I you? I was a dinosaur kid. I, I was also uh, a kid who loved rocks. I collect a lot of rocks and would bang and break up the rocks and uh, find little treasures inside and things I thought were, were special. It's a di um, dinosaur kid and a rock kid. Yeah, I didn't have electronics. We didn't have TV. So I also read a lot of books, read a lot of books. Uh huh. That's a good answer. Hold on. Uh, no, I'm interested in that. No, wait. Let's keep going. What was that? Three questions? Um, oh, yeah. We got one comment that you're a bit quiet. Let me see if I can screw with that on my side. And if you have a way of screwing with that on your side, that would be cool. I'm not sure if you do, though. Okay. Um, I'm on speaker. Let me see if I get off speaker. Uh, let's see. Is that better or worse? This is, same. I think this is better. Okay. Yeah, I think Does we're that good. Does that sound better? Does that sound better, chat? How is this? Does my voice come through better? Yeah, I think you're, I think you're pretty good. I'm okay. Me me messing with the dials over here to make sure we get it right. Sweet. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit disorganized. Now let's open up flight. Similar. Excellent. Um, all right, more questions. Do you have a favorite? An oh, spirit animal. That's four. Oh, spirit animal. Yeah. Um, I, th I think who is it that was Eigen was asking that question earlier, and I, I kind of put down somewhat jokingly the Bigfoot. Uh -huh. uh, but that's prob probably not a bad answer. Probably a Bigfoot as the, the cryptid uh, is probably a good spirit animal. Nice. Um, how, do you how do you drink your coffee, if at all? I drink espresso straight, four shots of espresso, and usually take two of those a day. Four shots of espresso. Tw yeah, so it's a, it's a lot. Tw of twice a day. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. The uh, oh god, sorry, everybody. I'm just gonna actually fix my um, stream setup and focus on that briefly so that I can ask, ask these questions in a good way. Window capture. You guys can see my whole. All the secrets revealed. All the secrets revealed. This is this is what it what it's like in the this is like the back room. What is this? I don't even know how that got on there. Cool. We got you. We got me. Almost ready. Move. There we go. Okay. And my music on my side turned into organs, so I'm going to change that back into jazz because the organs are weird. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite type of music? Oh, I think I listen to a lot of, of, of dad rock mostly. Uh, 90s, uh -huh. indies, and 60s greatest hits. Um, some classical music. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of magnetic fields lately. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I used to really like the mag magnetic fields. Um, and then what happened? What's that? You used to listen to them. What happened? You know, what happened? I think I listened to some of their sad songs when I was like in high school and like sad about girls. Okay. And then I just got 
less sad about girls. <laughs> kind of, I think that's what happened. Uh-huh. Um, um, yeah, I just started listening to the, the 69 love songs and uh-huh. kind of went from there. I, I mean, they were, they were new to me uh, just a couple weeks ago and I've just been digging in deep. It's, it's in such the, a cool, it's such a cool object. It's like such a cool entity. You know, what, what is it? Like probably they released that on multiple CDs or something. Yeah, 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 and and it's nice on Spotify that you can listen to the whole thing, uh-huh. and then I've been kind of creating a playlist of, of what I actually like and the ones that are just kind of you know okay, all right, that was an experiment, right? And so yeah, I keep the songs that I really like to listen to over and over and over again. Sweet, um, really quick before I continue with my with, with my blitz, which is slowed down. Where should we fly today? Anywhere in the world? Oh, um. Lisbon. Lisbon. Let's do it. I find Lisbon. Every time this happens, it tests my geographical knowledge because sometimes I scroll to the wrong place. Um, yeah, you're, you're getting close there. Yeah. <laughs> Lisbon Airport. And uh, where should we go to? We, From va- um, Lisbon. Let's go to Porto. Porto, Portugal. All right. Uh, does that, no, that seems like the wrong one. Porto, Portugal. Oh, Lisbon Airport in America? Also, yeah, so. Oh, no, yeah, 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 no, wait. Lisbon Airport in America, what is that? (laughs) It's like, uh, Cairo, uh, Illinois. (laughs) Um. Does anybody in here know where the LPPT... Thank you. Thank you, Lithros. LPPT. Yeah, Lisbon, Lisbon. Okay, there we go. There we go. Lisboa. LPPT. Nice. All right, cool. And do you have a preference on a plane? You'll you'll see them moment... Or, or, or a plane type. I'll scroll through them slowly, though you're going to have a little bit of delay. So if anything catches your eye, um, we have various types of jets... Little ones with, um, you know, kind of weird, little weird looking ones. There's a 747 and then there's a fighter jet. Those are the yeah, notable. Let's, let's go back to that Robin. Let's see the Robins. Uh, Robin. I think there was like a yellow one and a blue one. Yes. Oh, there, yeah, there's a blue Robin here and there was. Oh, there's a red one. Okay. Yeah, let's do the blue one. All right. I don't know if I've even flown this one before. Hopefully it won't be a disaster. Okay, cool. Um, okay, back to my question, Blitz. I think I'm gonna say that was like five. Um, is there a nonfiction book that you like? Nonfiction book that I like. I'm trying to think of. Um, I'm a big fan of um, Charles Mann's 1491 and 1493, which uh, is sort of. Uh, what the world of the Americas looked like before and post colonial influence. Uh, and those are, those are both books that I tout um, quite frequently when I get a chance to a really fascinating looks at what the Americas were like uh-huh. um, before, before the uh, um, European contact. You know, what uh, might interest you is um, looking for it on my shelf. There it is. Um, along those lines is the conquest of new Spain. I don't know if you've heard of this one. Okay. Um, it's by Bernal Diaz, which is the name of a guy who was with Cortez when the oh, Spanish go yeah. to Mexico. Yeah. There's a great podcast. Um, oh, no, I'm trying to think of the exact name of it, but it's a, it's about lost and destroyed civilizations. Uh-huh. And he goes over, uh, I'm listening to one about the Incas right now, but he's also had one on the Aztecs. Yeah. And just, just how those places imploded uh, once the contact happened. Right. Yeah, the um, I'm, I'm going to try to figure out how to get this plane off the ground. There we go. Okay. Got a little bit of motion here. Come um, on, little Robin. Yeah. But you can look inside of it, too, by the way. Okay. Which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. You can see all the little, like, dials and stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, 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 wait. I paused by accident. Oh, oh, it. Eh. There we go. Up. All right, we're we're up. There we go. (laughs) We're up. (laughs) 
Oh man, this is a wobbly little plane. Wow. So I don't know much about planes and I'm kind of bad at the game, but um, I've played it for like 70 hours because of the show. So yeah. I get by. Okay. So I just need 10,000 hours to be. Uh, oh, right. oh, okay. All right. All right. I just crashed. Um, let's try this again. I think I haven't broken the thing. It seems like a very think work plane. Says, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, wobbly and prone to crashing. <laughs> What's up, John? Oh, yeah, by the way, so so think we do have the chat here. I don't know if you, we, yeah, you can I, see I'm, I'm in the chat. Uh, oh, um, no. Kind of seems like, uh, oh, no. Listening. There we go. We're going to try this again. What's up? It's crispy time. All right. Four more questions, I think. Um, favorite mythological character? Oh, hmm. that's a good one. Um, Hercules is the one that comes to mind. Um, uh, I maybe I'd probably go with Prometheus. I think Prometheus is, is so uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the sacrifices and the penalty and what he paid for it um yeah i think i'll go with prometheus Prometheus, yeah that's a good answer bring fire to mankind a lot of people don't know about the the one where he um with the bags of meat uh, oh remind me of that one it's basically uh at least in the thing i read as a kid so i had my parents got me this very good comic book version of the myths and oh. i had one for the myths and i had one for um what do you call it king arthur you know round table like that set of oh. stories and anyway this is before the whole stealing fire thing that and they're kind of using it to show that prometheus is like a trickster and it's oh. that he brings two bags of meat to zeus and one of them is all like guts and stuff but on top, it looks like good meat. And on the other one, it's all good meat. But on the top, it looks like guts and like bad parts that, you know, undesirable parts of the animal. And Zeus picks the wrong one and then gets really mad. So they also kind of use this to show that like the gods aren't totally omniscient. Okay, yeah. I thought it was to show that Prometheus is not totally a good guy either. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd yeah. be mad too, you know. Um, all right, cool. I, I think we'll have a little bit better luck here with... I'm going to yeah, try to get some altitude. Yeah, less wobbly. Yeah, we're, we're up and aloft. Yeah. This is... Uh, you know what it is? It's the wind. The wind just hits this thing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned off the disaster. Uh, Porto's the other way. Thank you. Thanks, John. Oh, man. <laughs> all right, I'm going to try one more thing that I might have to switch the plane just because I don't know how to... Uh, it's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Um, here we go. Slew mode. And I can cheat. <laughs> there we go. There's my altitude. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can make it work from here. And if not, we're, we're switching planes. Um, all right, sweet. Three more questions. What else do I have for you? Last time you pulled an all-nighter. Well, I am a parent of twins, and uh, we had lots of sleepless nights when the girls were first born. Um, they were also uh, uh, preemie. Uh, they, were, they were born at about 25 weeks, which if you know anything about babies is terribly, terribly small. Yeah. And we had a, a lot of sleepless nights in the NICU. Uh, but that's probably been a good four years now that that girls were in good health. And so I'm glad uh, to hear that, you know, I'm, I'm a dad and I got my routine, so right. I'm not pulling the all nighters very <laughs> often unless some, one of the girls is sick or something. Right. Uh, it doesn't happen. Right. Got it. Got it. All right. One more question before okay. we can just, uh, okay. Here's the question, which is do to what extent do your family and, and people in your life, you know, in your in your real life, um, uh, know about your Twitter? Um, 
my my kids and my uh, wife certainly do. Yeah. I mean, I think I've told my parents and brothers and extended family that they don't care. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But uh, like people I work with and my students, no, I don't. Right. They don't really know about it. Uh, they don't care about it. <laughs> I don't think they, they're, they're really cognizant of it. So, yeah, it really is just my immediate circle that, that knows about the, the yeah. Twitter account. Yep, yep. Cool. All right. Well, th that, that was my experiment. I haven't done the question blitz before, and I hit a couple stumbling blocks with crashing the plane and having to switch games and, and everything, but I, I think it went pretty well. Um, the uh, So I guess n now that you're here... Um, we did have some questions from on Twitter. Okay. And um, uh, before the end, hopefully we'll get a couple people to call in and they might want to ask you stuff directly. And okay. I, I think I just kind of want to know a little bit like about you and your like, what is think work, I guess. Okay, here's a question for you. Like, like how did you come to the current thing that you do? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, uh, for many years, the ThinkWord account was really one I just used to follow people that I thought were interesting, hence ThinkWord. And I, I really never spoke. I never talked. I never said anything. Never tweeted. Mm. But uh, around January of last year, so I'm, I've only got, you know, 40 people I've picked up over the years as far as followers. And because I never tweet. So mm. I thought, well, I'm just going to try different stuff. So for uh, two months straight, I posted a fact about William Blake every day. Uh huh. So no jokes, uh, just a fact about William Blake, the poet. Uh, I've done my some of my dissertation work in, in Blake, and I was teaching a class in Blake. So that's kind of where I started. Uh huh. And then I kind of ran out, <laughs> ran out of Blake facts to <laughs> post. And so I switched, I, just, I tried lots of different things, uh, you know, just the standard little jokes of, with words, and they didn't seem to go anywhere. I tried a lot of jokes with emoticons, and they didn't seem to go anywhere. And then uh, I experimented with kind of a, a joke about Twitter and fantasy fairy tale photo uh -huh. uh, picture, rather, and that did well, that en en engaged. And so I just kind of experimented over and over and over again with these kind of fairy tale, whimsical images and jokes combined. And that seemed to be the formula that worked for me. So it, it really was kind of a trial and error over several days, weeks, months. I think it was really probably March or April of last year before I really kind of hit my stride Yeah. Uh, on, on those that kind of joke. And then I had the, the, the games as well, the Twitter games. So basically, okay, that's interesting. Um, okay, since I have you here and I am interested in this, uh, if somebody describes something as Blakeian, what do they mean by that? Obviously, they mean having to do with William Blake, but what, what, is, right. what so, does that mean? Um, Blake is very um, prophetic, kind of spiritual, a little bit mystical uh so if someone says something is blakeian that tends what i tends to be what i would think blake is also very interested in the poor and in children uh -huh. had a lot of very simple verse and so it's that i would think of also as blakeian as being interested in in the poor and the childlike but i, I would if someone said oh that's very blakeian i would assume they meant something of the visionary mm. um, poetic kind of uh voice uh he had some kind of a, a bit of a sensibility of, a, of a being a prophet speaking to a corrupt world and that's a lot of of what i think comes through in later poets who try to kind of copy and emulate what blake did huh that's okay that's useful just for me personally because um i'm always kind of right now I'm, I'm actually trying to get through paradise lost um okay and uh, I have the audio book and okay. um, that's a whole experience too. Just, yeah. Yeah. you know, hearing it on audio. I listened to um, the Iliad on audiobook, and 
I actually was listening to the Iliad while I was on a rowing machine. I would like exercise and listen to the okay. Iliad, get really pumped up. Um, yeah. And but part of it was be, you know the whole oral tradition thing, and so then I ended up on on Milton, which is of course you An know epic. yeah yeah and and like his language is just like yeah. is uh, I don't you know. I don't even have the words, and so anyway, it kind of got me thinking more about and more about poetry and like what that's for. Um, yeah, Par Paradise Lost is is terrific, and it, it's amazing how really accessible it is, at least in my opinion, for a piece written in the late 1600s, mm -hmm. and just how powerful it is. But speaking of Blake, Blake was a huge Milton fan. In fact, he wrote a poem called Milton, in which he uh, it's basically fan fiction. Uh -huh. which Milton comes to visit him and talk to him. And it's all about, he just adored Milton. That's and, amazing. Uh, talked about it, uh, about wanting to meet his hero. He's, he was one of his heroes. Oh, that's amazing. That's super cool. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I just got sidetracked by the whole, by the whole Blake and poetry thing. So I'm, I'm interested in it, but the, um, uh, back on the Twitter account. So, okay. So it sounds like you were kind of, basically you were, you, you were a lurker. I mean, and then yeah. you were like, I guess what made you think that it would be fun to get followers? Like what, what, what clicked? Was it just like, well, you know, what, I um, could do this or, or what? I, I interacted with, with I can robot a few times back when I literally was never tweeting, mm -hmm. but I would reply to people and he started following me for some reason. And I was like, I don't know why this account that this big is following me when I never tweet. Mm -hmm. But you know, if he's following me, maybe, Maybe I can't tweet. Maybe I'll do something. Right. So it was sort of just that kind of experimental uh, idea of let's try something. Let's try something and see what happens. And um, it kind of worked. Sweet. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, I like that as backstory. Um, the uh, yeah, that's interesting. So something about that just kind of was like probably Eigen Robot has taste in tweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I mean, I'm not the only person that has that kind of story. I know a lot of other accounts were like, oh, for some reason, I can start to follow me, uh -huh. and then uh, they, they started tweeting. It's interesting, too, because I, I, I've been on Twitter for about, like, I don't know, 14, 15 months, and just gone through all these stages with it, you know, um, and it, it, it it's super true that at the, those early moments where you're like am i even doing this whatever a little bit of like positive attention from right. a big account from someone you think is cool is, is is meaningful you know yeah 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 um so i guess here's another question then so i get i would i, I don't know what the question is but i okay. would be interested in hearing you kind of like riff on in some ways, like the development of the aesthetic, like, you know, the kind of spirit that's in like a think work tweet, you know, it, like, do you feel like that's al always been a thing that you, you like, did you always think that way? Does that make sense? Like, were you, were yeah, you, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, I think so. I think, I think it does kind of capture a little bit of, of my spirit. Um, uh, I, I think a lot of it comes down to what, when I was 12, what did I like? What was I fascinated by with at twelve? So it's uh, cryptids and old ruins mm -hmm. and uh, fantasy novels and science fiction and all those kind of things that uh, you know animals, the things that I really liked when I was twelve. And I think it's it's a little bit of that that same spirit, the twelve year old boy mm -hmm. uh, spirit that uh, who read way too many books and was out wandering in the hills walking uh, all around the i lived out in the country and was walked everywhere er, everywhere mm. uh every day and that's kind of the spirit that's in there as well and i, I also there's a little bit of a kind of a zagging uh, where everyone else is zigging you know zigzag uh that i saw so many people would make jokes about current events mm -hmm. or uh you know political twitter pol polemic twitter having a very strong strident opinions about right. whatever the current news is up to date. So uh, trying to kind of go weave an opposite direction, kind of tacking against that. Uh, I, you know, I kind of talk about whimsy Twitter and it's, it's kind of that, that counteraction to that very, very serious or kind of sneering snide 
mean the, the kind of the mean aspect of Twitter. Totally. Uh, just just trying to try to pull away from that. There's nothing uh, mean about it. But at the same time, I, I try to avoid being too, I don't know, cuddly cute all the time. Right. Um, there's a, a quote in the Narnia series that are talking about Aslan, and uh, they say he's good, uh, but he's not safe. He's good, but he's not safe. Uh huh. And so I, I think I want to have a little bit of that not safe edge. A little, right. a little spooky, a little scary, without being, um, uh, I guess, I guess over the line. Just, just a little bit of things in there that are a little bit darker. Yeah. Sometimes that sometimes it caused me to lose some followers right but i right. don't i don't want to be the too cute and cuddly all the time yeah it's interesting i i think there's something like if i were to articulate I, i'm glad you you mentioned that because you know because i make these pictures right i try to put together i make these promo images and i often it's from someone i've, I've been following but like i haven't ever gone deep on like what is their thing and so I'm, I'm trying to, so for example, uh, uh, Chaos Prime came on um, and I did these promo images that were very, you know, I kind of went for this, like, what do you call it? Like um, trippy kind of Lovecraftian, like your mind okay. is being bent and broken by the beholding of some evil truths and whatever. And so, but a little bit for me, because I, I, I'm pretty interested in like aesthetics and stuff. It's a bit of a roll of the dice because I hadn't like gone super deep on his stuff yet and i'm like does this work etc likewise with you i think there's something like i'm glad you pointed out that it's not just the cuddly and cute thing because there are probably a lot of accounts out there there that are you know pictures of children's books period or something like that or just right 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 um so i guess yeah there there is that kind of like wild or or like this the weirdness there's a there's a weird element yeah and there's also yeah. some kind of element of like play. Like I feel like the choose your own adventure thing, uh, right, is is important. Yeah, and that's kind of I think that is kind of what I'm trying to get. And, and I, you know, I I try to pick when I pick pictures of animals, I generally tend to use wildlife rather than, you know, cats. You know, mm. cats is very are very very uh, popular on Twitter right. and internet in general. And so I, mean, I'll, I will occasionally have a cat picture, but I, I tend to use things that are wild, you know, a frog or a bear uh, rather than a cat or a dog. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking about that. Um, and then can you say some things about the about the Choose Your Adventure stuff so i think i've i've only seen two of those have you made a bunch yeah. more or it was just the two there's probably about a dozen um however since like july i've only done three uh-huh um and part of them i think is they're a victim of my own ambition because every time I, I make one they get bigger uh-huh and more sprawling and more exhausting right um, but for a while and i would say april through may june I had one every week, or almost every Wednesday. I would have a Twitter game uh -huh. that I would post, um, and they were uh, a little bit like trying to build a house out of sand, uh -huh. <laughs> a sand, a sand castle. You know, Twitter is not really a medium for building a game, uh -huh. but it was a kind of a challenge and, and um, a lot of planning, a lot of planning. Uh, some of them were around a thousand tweets, all interconnected. Oh wow! Um, uh, I may be done with them. I don't know. I uh, the last one was so much work, and it didn't seem to last much more than a day or two in the Twitter sphere. So uh, right, maybe this summer I'll pick it up again. But it was just one of those things. Like, what what can you do with Twitter? What's what is something that people aren't doing? Mm -hmm. How do you kind of stretch and build it and bend it in ways that's not supposed to be used? Right, but uh, you know, you I had the always had the Lego sets, and I would build it according to the picture in the box, and then I'd be like, okay, that's boring. Right. So then you just you do something totally different, and you use the the bricks in a way they weren't meant to be built, and right. that's kind of what I was trying to do with the Twitter, the Twitter games, uh, putting them together in ways that weren't weren't standard. Yeah. Uh, for for the for what Twitter is supposed to be. I guess I'm also curious, like, have you, with that, are you at, still at a, like, and do you expect to stay at a, like, you know, um, 
let's just keep making this because it's cool? Or do you have some vision beyond that? Like, you know, so, no, uh, it, it's it's really just because it, it's cool and fun, and I enjoyed it. And I, was, I was looking for a new yeah new challenge. I think one of the reasons why I'm just uh, maybe putting on the back burner now uh-huh. is because with each game I was able to innovate something new. So like, okay, what if I was trying to create a world map using just tweets? Mm. What if I was trying to create inventory for the players with just tweets, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or create like a civilization? How would I create a civilization <laughs> game using just tweets? Right. And I, I you know, I, I and so at, at, by ultimately, I've kind of felt like, well, I don't, I don't really have that I, a new idea I'm excited about. Right. That I can use to create something. So, so I won't say never, but I, I, there, there are probably no plans for any more games in the, the near future. The, um, the. A uh, thing this made me think of, and and I can uh, fire this over later if you're interested in in it, is um, there's this YouTube video called Magnasanti, which is a guy playing Sim City. Have you heard of this? No. So this dude, it's basically like this guy plays Sim City, some older version of Sim City, and he makes these like mega cities that are like, oh. and you really get the sense like the game is not meant to be played this way. Um, and they're like, he, he just has this really epic, terrifying music and he's, he's showing all his calculations. He's got like scribbles and notebooks from like, you know, he's like year four of building, you know, like the predecessor of Magnusanti. And then he just makes these mega cities that are just like extremely efficient, like pretty just to, you know, if anyone lived there in real life, it would be like hell. Um, yeah. but you know, they're, they're maximizing population per square foot or whatever it is. Um, yeah. anyway, just made me think of that. This kind of like just hacking it. Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Try, trying to hack, hack what the game is supposed to do and right. finding your new way of doing it. Yeah. Right. See that. Um, sweet. What, what's next for, for you on in terms of twitter like what do you if if you plan or in that way or or, are you rep sorry i'm having trouble getting these thoughts out it's like um do you have a direction you're steering towards does that make sense that's that's a good question the the answer really is is right now no yeah uh i i've got kind of my routine and, and i post a lot on the weekdays just a little bit on the weekends and just keep posting those joke tweets right um and and the um, questions and things like that right so no right right now it, it kind of is just maintaining that same routine and there's just the the same routine i have every day with uh what i tweet and when and what mm. i retweet and uh and just plugging through there so uh, i'm not sure what's next i i think i might tried to experiment here and there and I, I usually do to try to find something new every once in a while, throw it in there, see what people think and right and then I'll you know, okay, that didn't really work. Pull something out. But right. Just a lot of lot of stuff I throw out there. You know, I I probably write something like a hundred and twenty tweets a, a week and then post maybe eighty and then I delete half of them uh-huh. and uh, start over again the next week. Huh. That, and that pretty much takes all my free time right now. A lot. I don't even know what no, what my number is because it, it's very interesting to hear you describe it that way because it's there's like almost like a production line sense yeah. to it. Um, I do this like I feel like I'm having like an emotional interaction with Twitter where I'm like I complain, you know, I do this, I do that. I used to plan stuff out more. I used to plan like, like long threads, but it's interesting because you're kind of doing a different different thing in a way. Um, yeah, it's very um, almost regimented. Uh, you know, I even have the, that 10 o'clock tweet that I post every night mm, uh, mm-hmm. to say, you know, goodbye. I have an alarm uh, that I wake up every morning at 6.30 and I start retweeting. And it's just, uh, I, I guess that, that almost sounds like it's uh, confining uh, or a prison, but that's that. It's part of, I, I like that routine. I like that routine of the way I, yeah. I do Twitter through the day and yeah um it works with my schedule you know i i teach i have office hours but i find time here and there to do 30 seconds on twitter post something and move on to something else right we, we had a couple of questions in the chat um torvald asked is there ever going to be a think archive with some basic curation 
Um, no, I, I don't have any plans on it. I, I mean, there there is the deleted words uh, account, mm. which is is basically the joke tweets that don't make don't make the cut, don't get enough engagement. Right, and that's it's about half of them. Uh, and I will repost most of the deleted ones in deleted word. Um, sometimes there's a joke I think I could recycle or reuse. Uh, you know, oh, well, that's such a great picture, but that the punchline didn't work. It didn't land. So yeah. I'll, I'll just I'll just throw it back in the pile and and try to rework it. Um, but that yeah, deleted word is about the closest I I get to any kind of sense of archive about it. So then the ones you delete, is that because are you kind of just trying to keep a timeline that is high quality, if that makes sense? Like if someone scrolled that, through That's it. part of it. Um, uh, I want to let the, uh, the, the expression I often use is weeding. Mm. You know, if you have two or three or four weak tweets and a strong tweet, then the, they tend to suck a little bit of mm-hmm. the attention away from the good tweet. And because I have so many sitting in the in the draft tab, mm-hmm. that there's really there's no need to kind of, you know, give this one a second, third, fourth, fifth chance. You right. Just, you know, just just put it away, put it in the deleted word, slap on the next one. I don't tend to be too sentimental or attached to any particular joke. Yeah. Uh, if I do get attached to a joke, I'll just leave it. Mm. Uh, but that doesn't happen very often. Like I said, there's just so many. Uh, you just you just post and go and. Okay, it worked. It didn't work, and then you move on to the next one. Right. Um, really quick, uh, Volk, go go check out Thinkworth's uh, Twitter account. Um, he t- posts cool pictures and stuff. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't pitch it that well. Um, <laughs> the uh, oh, Fool Jeff says first time at Thinkworth's Twitter. I'm having a ball. Uh, that was great. There you go. You got a happy. You got a happy visitor. Had the right, customer. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess, by the way, let, I'll put it out there for the, you know, for the viewers. If anybody's thinking about hopping in to ask a question, we could do that pretty soon. Um, I don't know if may, maybe he's going to minute get a, get a minute out from her uh, lost class again. Um, all right, let me think. How close are we to Porto? We're still we're still flying over Lisbon. Yeah, we're, we're uh, area. I should have looked to see. I don't know if you can see this on the left. Let me make this I bigger. Did. Yeah, I yeah, see yeah. It now. I see it now. Yeah. We got this big line, so it takes a second. I think if I uh-huh. s- switch to like like a fighter jet or something, we get there a bit faster. Or the seven forty seven. The robot is not very fast, huh? Yeah, no, not too. There's some. Here we go. Air speed is like 85 knots. I think it's knots. It's probably knots. Okay. But yes, yeah, so, so this game, by the way, I don't know if you know much about it. Um, we're flying over Bing maps. Okay. So this is like what yeah. the world actually looks like. I um, remember there was something kind of viral a few months ago about some place in Australia that had the, the wrong um, coordinates put in. So there was like a building that was 200 feet high, but it really wasn't. It's just the, the <laughs> mistake in the data. Okay. Do you remember this? No, I didn't. mistake in the data that was in the game. And so there's a random town, I think it was Australia, that had a 200 foot tall skyscraper that wasn't there in real life because uh, of some mistake. I don't know if someone in the chat remembers that. Um, a link to that one, but right. Yeah, that's my main association with this game. Well, were they saying it's like a CIA thing, or like was that the kind of? It was. It was just a, a bureaucratic error. Someone someone fat fingered a number, right, and made a huge building where there wasn't it. Right. Um, Lithra says there's still plenty of things like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you have any questions for chat? I guess if you've got a bunch of got a bunch of people here, if you have any anything you'd want to ask a, a group of them that I think mostly are Twitter people. Um, so, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. I, I see someone saying, what's the story behind the account name? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. If you, those of you in chat, I want you to look at your fingers. All right. Everybody looking at their fingers. Type out. W E R T T R E W, were true. W E R T. I'm oh, sorry, I spelled it. Two T's, in the chat, and look at your fingers as you type. 
and you see that those four keys are next to each other. Mm. Anyway, Wertru is the name that I've used since I was a wee lad playing games on my dad's computer. And it's a name that I've used uh, on the internet for years and years and years and years. Mm. And so I had an account that, that I created just for following interesting people. I called it ThinkWert. And that's where the name comes from, ThinkWert, just uh, following there. I actually had an account called just Wertru, and uh -huh. I, I let it go. I deleted it uh, because I was never on there. So the official account is now gone, but so it's, it's just ThinkWert. Nice. I love getting these little bits of lore. Um, yeah, it's such a random thing. You know, it, it doesn't really have any great significance. Yeah. Um, I think someone said in German, word, words means maybe craft or create. Uh -huh. So it's like, what, were you trying to say create thinking or create thoughts? And I'm like, no, no, no. that's, not, that's <laughs> right. not it. That's a better story. That would be cool. Than I have, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's not it. Yeah. See, oh, someone thought it was a play on the German Dinkwert in the sense of think worth. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, worth. Uh, that, yeah, but no, no, that's not it. Um, Riddle Doodle asks, "Where do you get your whimsy inspiration?" Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I you know I, I was talking earlier about that. Um, that, well, that twelve-year-old boy. Uh, and I think that's that's part of it, just that that creativity, um, uh, and thinking about things in, in different and, and strange ways, a little bit off kilter. Um, I've always been somebody who likes to kind of quip, make a little quip. Uh, I've also found humor in, in things, personifying things. So, what if this animal could talk? What would this animal be saying? Mm. If this tree could talk, what would this tree say about this situation? Uh, I, I I like a lot of these images where there's kind of a social interaction of some kind. You know, two trees that might be talking or, or two uh, frogs talking. And what would they say to each other? Uh, and, I you know, especially if it's something that's more modern, contemporary, you mm. know, talking about. I had a joke today about lions in a Discord channel, right? Yeah, something that's that's old, but you, you mix in a new reference, something that's contemporary. Mm. Uh, but I've always liked that kind of humor. What would, you know, the up, uh, the upside down, the perspective of something from the opposite end. And I don't know if that's a uh, terribly interesting answer, but that's probably the best, the best I can come up with. I, I guess then I have a version of this question, or like a tweak on the question, which is you're talking about the 12-year-old the boy thing. And I, th I think for myself, to tap into my version of that, I'd have to like get myself in the zone a little bit. I, it's like you get used to being a different person, right? Um, uh -huh. And I guess I wonder, is that something you kind of have kept with you, you know, in like full form, I guess, or something you like went back to, like kind of reverse engineered or, or kind of rediscovered what, what that was about? I, I think it's it's pretty core to who I am. Um, I, I I don't think it took too much of a stretch right. to find to find that voice. It was it was pretty much there on the surface. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, w says sounds a little Aesop, a little token. The, Tolkien. The thing it made me think yeah. of actually was was Disney. Um, just because I've been uh, like early Disney, just because I've been, I've been uh, listening to this yeah. Disney autobiography, and they're talking about like the yeah. animation and yeah. So, so this is a, a random question, but have you watched Pinocchio? Yeah, yeah. The Pinocchio, uh, I rewatched. We got Disney Plus maybe a year ago. Yeah. Uh, when it first came out, and I I hadn't watched Pinocchio since I was a kid. Right. And I was just flabbergasted uh -huh. uh, by that movie. Because you do not know what's going to happen next. And uh -huh. there's so few movies that do that where you cannot predict at all what's uh -huh. going to happen in the next scene. Right. Uh, where it'll end up, where it will go. And it's just such a, a, a fan. I had an emotional experience watching Pinocchio that I've not had in a while because it's just so amazing. Just so, so amazing where that movie goes. It may be. I think it is my favorite of the Disney movies. So, yeah, so I, I, this is all in my mind because I, I've been listening to this book. 
um, Snow White was their first feature film. Uh And there's this whole arc of the thing where it's like, you know, there's this question, like, do people, are people going to want to watch a feature film that's a cartoon? You know, like, will this work at all? And the the way I'm hearing this story is that cartoons were mostly used for, like, kind of just, like, entertainment, like, song and dance, like, Felix the Cat type stuff. And, um... But then apparently at the at the premiere where like Clark Dick Gable was at the premiere of Snow White, um, uh, people were crying, you know, because, you know, like Snow, Snow White, it seems like she's dead. You know, all these bad things happen and they've got like Grumpy coming out and Grumpy's been like this, like, you know, he's grumpy. Right. And then Grumpy starts crying. And it, there's this question of like, can we make tragedy with a cartoon? Um and the uh, the thing I remember about Pinocchio also, because I think Pinocchio is like the third one they made. The second was Bambi. Um, that uh, th- there was a lot of debate about the character of um, Jiminy Cricket. And um, apparently early versions of the cricket looked too cricket-like. And then they uh-huh. finally, you know, a little creepy, right? <laughs> um, right. An actual like insect. And then they basically just kind of made him like a guy and a, a little green guy in a, in a suit. Um and the, the last bit I'll mention is that uh, the character of Thumper I, apparently has some relation to Jiminy Cricket as the kind of um, wiser figure that's guiding the innocent uh, protagonist. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think if, if maybe Pinocchio would be better without Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> right. Uh, he, he is kind of a counterbalancing force. But he holds back the anarchy, and the anarchy is what's what's interesting about Pinocchio. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, I suppose that's maybe a an idle question. I don't have an answer to that. Right, right. Um, well, it's this whole whole like kind of morality play in a way. Right, right. Yeah. And with the, the blue fairy at the end and all that. Right, right. I'll have to rewatch it. That, that's uh, I appreciate the review. That, that does make me want to watch it again. Um. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the second call for Collins. If anybody wants to wants to jump in the in the chat to to you know speak on voice, um, but strictly optional, of course. Um, I think there were some questions on Twitter too, weren't there? Yeah, yeah. Let's look at those. So, all right. Well, Lithros asked, "What's the most innocuous behavior you can't stand? What does that say about you?" Um. I don't know. I was um, mentioning Starbucks earlier, and somehow uh, uh, we have a lot of Starbucks in town that are shut down, and, or they'll they'll be shut down for a few days at a time, or they'll turn off the um, call ahead apps. Mm. And I don't know what's going on. I I think it must be a staffing issue, but I don't understand with the current economy. You think you could find staffing? Mm. Uh, but it may be just because of what they have to to pay them that they can't afford more staff. But anyway, it irritates me that they have lines around the block uh-huh. when I want to get my morning espresso, and it seems they're always overstaffed, uh-huh. understaffed rather. And what, um, what does that yeah, say about you? Innocuous and petty. So yeah, yeah <laughs> I'll go with that. You go with that one. What does that say about you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I'm addicted to caffeine. Big food, uh, yeah. Probably the the problem. The, trying to get my fix uh before i head off to work right right um where's the strangest place you thought of a caption for a picture this is from meta jess um you know when i did the, the think work games i one of my the where i did most of my composing or thinking through was on on nature nature center walks i go Go to the nature center. Uh, I have a, a nice big walking stick that I, I take with me, uh-huh. and I uh, go for a walk for an hour or two, and, and just try to plan and think through everything as I'm as I'm walking. So if this happens, and this has to happen, and then we have to have a choice here. So what's the choice here? And, and so that that was um, a, a nice way because I was just composing it in my head as I was walking. Mm. With the with the pictures, I have to be kind of looking at them. So it's not really about the location so much. Um, I pick up the twins uh, from their kindergarten every day, and there's a car line. And if you don't get there by 310, 
then you're five blocks away and right. you don't get the girls until 4.15. So right. I, have to get, I have to get there a half hour early. And as I sit there for half an hour, that's where I end up writing almost, uh, not almost all, but, but many, very many of the tweets. Just sitting in my car waiting for the girls right. to get out of school and um, pull, pull, pull a bunch of tweets together. Right. Uh, yeah, the, the tweet I posted this evening about the uh, the crown and the frog and the berries, that was just t- today when I was waiting for the girls uh-huh. to be picked up from school. When you post the like thousand tw- tweet thing, do you just do it all at once, like hit send on your computer or in batches? I'm just, I'm just curious about that technical detail. The 10 p.m. tweet is uh, through Hootsuite. Right. Uh, and I plan those out several days in advance. The Everything else is, is done manually through my phone. I have it sitting in my drafts, and I'll try to kind of space out two hours at least right. between the last tweet. And a, a lot of it just kind of depends on my schedule. On Tuesday, Thursdays, I teach from 11 to 2. So it's it's uh, hard to get in a tweet in there, right? Um, but uh, otherwise, it's just kind of when I find time and there's enough space between right. them. The um, a riddle doodle asks, "What's your favorite children's book?" Hmm. I'm pretty interested in, in this one as well. I recently went back and reread Redwall series, mm. uh, the anthropomorphic mouse. And boy, those books still hold up. Those are still, still really good. I read so many of those uh, um, books. Uh, I've tried to get my daughter to read them with me a few times, and yeah. she keeps resisting. Yeah, uh, she's nine, so we're, we're, I'll try again. Maybe right. she turns ten. Uh, but yeah, I, I real uh, I remember rereading those fairly recently. Yeah, and and really liking them. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I love Redwall. Now that I'm, now that we're talking about like with the ages and when you read different stuff, I'm realizing that I I read um, Ender's Game. I think it was in fifth grade, and yeah. s- some of those books are like kind of, it's like kind of heavy. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have an opinion on that or like a? Oh uh, well, I I mean I I think I was the same. I uh, fifth sixth grade I was reading right two hundred three hundred page novels and. And consuming them, I, I think I read Lord of the Rings when I was in the sixth grade. Yeah, wow. Um, but uh, I probably had more of an education of, of the way the world works than my parents may have realized uh-huh. uh, reading some of these more adult, right. adult novels right. uh, at that age. But I was a, a voracious, voracious reader, just reading all the time, all the time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I think I read, I, I also read Lord of the Rings, it was like around seventh grade, and I liked The Hobbit a lot better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I When I first read it, I got to the part where the very last book, and they're on the plains, and it's just so desperate. Mm. And I got so sad that I, I stopped reading oh. it. And then, and then I, a few months later, I tried again, but I started from the beginning. I read book one, I read book two, and then I got the same spot. And I uh-huh. thought, it's just too depressing. Uh-huh. And finally, the third time, I just went back to the same spot. And, of course, it's only a few pages after that that everything turns out so great, so wonderful. Right. Uh, but I, I was so discouraged by how bleak the situation was for Frodo uh, and Sam that I quit reading. Uh, yeah. And then I finally, finally got through it. You got to you gotta take them out of there. You got to get them yeah, through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, let me see what other... Twitter questions we had. Um, maybe ask, do you experience all thought in flashes of strange vintagey imagery? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I guess that's probably the, the truthful answer to that. Yeah. Right. Um, the uh, Tor- Torval asked, do you feel like riffing on Sop- Sophocles and or Bacon for a bit? Sophocles or Bacon? Um, or just if you, my, my own, my own, you know, modification would be, I'm kind of just curious to hear a little bit more about like what you're interested in literature wise. Um, if that's well, not too broad. Um, uh, I have a, a PhD in, um, British romantics and literature, and I'm teaching a class in romantics this semester for the first time. 
So uh, I, there was a, a guy in our department, a uh, senior fellow, and he, he his area was British Romantics. And so for eight years, I've been waiting in the wings uh -huh. to take over. And so I finally, this semester, he's retired, and so I've, I've got my chance in it. So uh, right now, I am just uh, neck deep in, in Byron and Shelley and Keats and Jane Austen. Uh -huh. And uh, kind of re rereading all these these greats and just plugging away at them, and that's kind of where my headspace has been the last month and a half. Uh -huh. Is deep deep in the the British Romantics. And what's the? I guess can you give me like a little bit of a window into what the academic world is like in that part of academic subject matter? Like, it, is the? Do you write about? them right so. um i would say the average person in the field would yeah uh, the way i would describe it i i work at a very small private liberal arts college that you've never heard of yeah uh, in the midwest and uh it's mostly a teaching college so i ended up i i teach five classes a semester mm -hmm. and i don't really do much writing uh, really, I, that's probably uh, bad to admit, but I, I don't do much academic writing. Uh, if you were a person in a standard university, you would be, and you'd be getting uh, some fellowships and posting and trying to do those kind of things. Um, but uh, I, I have tenure, and I don't need to do that. Don't so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, my position is, is secure. And so I've, I've got, I can kind of do what I want. And um, I've got a nice little bubble where I'm at. And I have a lot of independence where I'm at. And I, I like it. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, yeah, the, yeah, man. I mean, a, a thing I think about a lot is just how, how astoundingly good some, some of these writers are. And just yeah. like... The just the uh, I have a blog post I wrote about Michelangelo where it's just like I'm just thinking about this, you know, just the like absolute power of like the human mind, you know, to produce some mm -hmm. of these great works, and it's just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're like, I'll write a story, <laughs> you know, it sort of yeah. it doesn't land quite the same, and so you're, you know, it's part of the it's part of the part of life, you know, as, as yeah. a person who tries to create things. Um, well, we are getting close to our time. I'll keep you on as long as, as you're willing, but I do want to be able to get you out of here um, and back to your life and family uh, in a timely fashion. So, um, you know, unless you have a, you know, a more more time falling out of falling out of, into your hands somehow, we could wrap up this section of the thing, um, or maybe even grab a final question from the audience if anybody has something that they've been holding on to. Well, I have a nine-year-old who's supposed to be in bed. So I think maybe one more question. Yeah, we can do that. Perfect. Riddle. What do we have here? You know what? Why don't you pick one from the ones that, that are getting. Uh... Let's see. Favorite poet would be William Blake. I, um, In fact, if you've seen my biography, uh, what is it called? It's a little bio on Twitter. It's a play on William Blake. Uh, the thing I wrote is the. Um, Let's see, the Tigers of Wrath are wiser than the Horses of Instruction, which is a Blake quote. And then I have the play about the uh, Spiders of Math are, are wiser <laughs> than at, at the Courses of Deduction, which is just a silly little phrase I've added onto it. Uh -huh. But that's where that comes from. It's a William Blake quote, the first part, and then a silly part that I've added on to the end. So Blake is my favorite poet. What advice do you have to young people? Oh, um... What makes you think I'm not a young person? I'm only 44. Aren't I? Aren't I young uh, too? Um, you know, keep 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 your health and um, follow Thinkword on Twitter. That's, uh, that's a, once the thing gets your daughter's love that you hate, the kindergartners love Blippi. If you don't know who that is, you are lucky. Blippi is an exceedingly annoying YouTube personality. And I don't see, I don't get what they see in him, but they love him. Well, uh, he's uh, sounds -L -I -P -P -I, horrible. Blippi. And, uh, yeah, it's cursed knowledge. 
do not look up Blippi, <laughs> you are better off for not knowing who Blippi is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there a question that I missed in there? I think that's about it. Yeah. Well, I probably need to get my daughter to bed. All right. Thank you so much for your time. This was fun. I'm really glad to have had a chance to chat with you well, and, thank you. and bring you How to the people. Did, we got to be halfway to Porto. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. 40%. Okay. Uh-huh. All right, man. Thank right. you very much. No problem. Okay. Good night. Good night. Guys, we did it. We had think we're on um, philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. Good night. That was great. I'm a little bit judging myself as an interviewer because I was kind of like, but like, Zach says that interview filled me with joy. Yeah, I. I feel like for a lot of it, we had like 35 people in chat and it was just like dead silent. I feel like just people were just chilling and just like listening to the man himself. 